Hey, welcome to Family Church. We are a diverse, spirit-filled, life-giving church, healing hurts, building relationships, and developing leaders. My name is Pastor John Mark. I'm so excited that you've connected to our page today. Be sure to grab a notebook, a pen, a paper, your phone, however you want to take notes and get ready for today's message. So, my, has anybody ever tried to be poetic? Have you ever tried to be poetic? Um, that last song that we just sang, here in your presence, we wrote that Tuesday uh, in our, like, our little, our worship time as we were getting ready for the weekend. We just kind of like started singing this melody and we put it together and we're like, oh, let's just try it for the weekend. I like it, it's beautiful. It's kind of poetic. Um, I've tried to be poetic. My wife asked me, it was our 20th anniversary in March. We made 20 years. And she says, thank you. <laughs> if you knew how I was, you wouldn't be clapping for me. I mean, <laughs> you, need to, you need to clap for her. She, yeah, she, she says to me, I want you to write me a letter. I want you to write me a letter. Tell me, tell me about me. I was like, all right. <laughs> I sat down. And I was like, you're five foot one. You weigh a hundred something pounds. Mm. You were born in the month of May. You live on Eminem Road in Middletown. You have brown hair and brown eyes. Yeah. <laughs> and she's like, what's that? <laughs> she's like, what's that? And I'm like, what? You said to tell you about you? I read it off your license. But like, you know, like, she meant like, be poetic. Tell me the depths of your love for me. I gave her facts, accurate facts, healthy facts, because I said 100 something pounds. I wasn't specific, but they were facts. She didn't want facts. She wanted poetry. See, I failed to communicate the depth, the magnitude, and the beauty of my love for her. Because love is more than a list of facts. Love is more than a list of factual information. Love is a mysterious and beautiful relationship between two people. And that's why poetry is used many times to express love, to express stories, even to express things in the Bible. The psalmist David was very poetic, his son Solomon very poetic. Jesus many times spoke in parables and poetry that we didn't understand. But I want to share with you a passage today that was not written poetically, it was written more factually. It has fact, but it also then uses a storyline to tell us the facts. Okay? So it has a poetic twist. But it's a factual statement. Jesus wants to paint a very clear picture to us about things of the truth of the gospel, sin in the world, and our freedom. I thought it would be proper today to talk about freedom on this 4th of July. Because it's hard to feel free sometimes. Although we're promised in the Bible we're free, we don't always feel free. I want to look at this today, okay? In the book of John, chapter 8, verse 31, Jesus says this. To the Jews who had believed him, Jesus said, if you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples. So he, he also, if you abide in me, if you abide in my teachings, if you abide in my word, you are my disciples. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. If you're a King James person, the truth shall set you free. They answered him, man, you start talking to somebody about freedom and they get all sorts of upset. They get all sorts of upset. What are you telling me I'm free? You can't tell me I'm free. You don't know what I go through. You don't know the struggle of my life. You don't know my past. How can you tell me I'm free? So you got that side. 
Then you got this side. You got the, 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 the prideful side. We are Abraham's descendants and we've never been slaves to anyone. How can you say that we shall be set free? Jesus replied, very truly I tell you, everyone who sins is a slave to sin. Same thing happened when he said it. Silence. We're all like, huh? I don't want to talk about that. I don't want to talk about that. Very true, I tell you, when he sins, the slave of sin. Now a slave has no permanent place in the family, but a son. A son belongs to it forever. So if the son has set you free, you are free indeed. And, and I think that's a great passage. We love to hear that. Whom the son has set free is free indeed. Whom the son has set free is free indeed. But, but, but what about when the son has set me free, but I don't feel free? Jesus is proclaiming freedom, not from individual sins. He's not talking about like you were in high school and you looked over at your neighbor's paper and you cheated on question 10. That's not what he's talking about. He's talking about that we are free from the sin that condemns all of humanity. The sin of the rejection of Jesus Christ. The one sin, the one sin that condemns you to eternal damnation, the sin of rejecting Christ. That's what he's talking about. If you've been set free from that, you are free indeed. The truth to which Jesus refers to is more than just factual correctness that dominates so much of the church. The church knows a lot of facts. Listen, and I know I'm not talking to anybody in the room. This is probably for the people online. But we know a lot of facts. We know the Bible is written by more than 40 authors. Fact. By over a period of 1,600 years, fact. No major contradictions in the Bible. Maybe, maybe some little like theological, or not theological, but, but writing differences between authors. But no, the Bible demands 100% prophecy fulfillment. Fact. But do we read it? We know the facts about it. But do we apply it? We know that the Bible says... Go into all the world and preach the gospel to unbelievers. Baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We know that the Great Commission is to evangelize. Fact. But do we evangelize? Right? We, 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 we have factual correctness. But application of those facts, I think the church struggles with. We know that we're supposed to evangelize and pray for people. But getting more than 15 people to Saturday prayer, kind of hard. We're supposed to have compassion on others. But especially in New York, it's real easy to walk by the homeless and not say a word. Come on, come on, come on, come on. No, 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 listen, no condemnation. I'm just saying let's be for real. Let's be for real. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. Whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. But do we extend that grace to those who offend us? Come on, we know facts, but do we know application? It's so easy to know the facts about Christianity, but doing it, living it, allowing to live in the joy of the Lord, I mean, listen, it's great to say the joy of the Lord is my strength, but then you're miserable and weak. <laughs> it don't work then it don't work. We ain't applying it right. Come on, can we be for real up in this church? The freedom that the people were looking for, they thought Jesus was gonna come in because he's the king of kings, he's the lord of lords. They thought that he was coming in with some kind of political freedom. That he was gonna overthrow the government. And that's not, that's not the freedom that he brought. The freedom that Jesus brought was to free one's spirit. He brought spiritual freedom. This is one of those things that got Jesus killed, that got him crucified. Jesus claims that he can set people free. 
Jesus claims that he can set people free. Whom the Son is set free, I'm the Son, is free indeed. Here's a major problem in the church today. We can, we can accept people trying to be set free who sin like us. As long as you can hide your sin, then you can worship with us and you can be set free. But when someone has a sin that they don't hide, church has a problem. Well, they can't worship here. They can't worship in this house. How does someone find the life-changing power of Jesus Christ if we don't create opportunities for them to encounter Jesus? Well, then we should just go to the streets because that's where they are. And they'll be set free on the streets, not in our church. Then we miss the point of church. We miss the point of church. Church is not a country club for Christians to come celebrate each other. Oh, look how good you are. Oh, man, you smell so good. You wearing Dracard Noir today? <laughs> Christianity and church is about the lost finding hope. Yes, yes. People having an encounter with the one who can change their life. If someone, come on, can we be, can we be free with today? Can I speak just like plain? Oh, I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> if someone came in here with a gender identity crisis. They are not gonna be set free according to our biblical truth unless they encounter Jesus. But how are they gonna encounter Jesus when they encounter a nasty greeter? How are they gonna encounter Jesus when they encounter a nasty usher? How are they gonna encounter Jesus when they encounter a nasty Christian who's been saved 99 years but ain't got no fruit? How do we get life change if our judgment stands as a barrier between them and Jesus? Ibaba. Oh. <laughs> I had somebody email me. They say, yo, what does Pastor Mike mean when he says Ibaba in his, in his sermons? I, I will tell you, it's, it's my form of making fun of speaking in tongues. I, do, I speak in tongues, and, and don't, don't, get, don't think that I'm like blasting speaking in tongues, but it's just a joke. It's like, I'm going to speak in right. Jesus claims he can set people free, and I'm going to tell you this. We have all, I don't care who you are today, we have all experienced something in our lives that grabbed a hold of us. It could be something as simple as Caffeine. Because it alters your behavior. If you don't get that caffeine, that thing grab a hold of you. Oh, boy. It could be sugar. Try going on a sugar diet. Try cutting all sugar out. You're going to have a pounding headache. You're going to get fever-like symptoms. You're going to be nasty to everybody. So, like, that's grabbed you. It's got a hold of you. There's an addiction in your body. We all have something. And, and, and it's easy to point out the major ones, like immoral addiction. Anger, foul language. But what about the more acceptable sins, like fear, greed, worldliness, bitterness, legalism, racism, insecurity, despair, depression, gossip? You don't think you have a gossip problem? Let's see, let's see if today you can go through an entire barbecue without talking about somebody behind their back in a way that is of no benefit to their future. Oh, did you see the car selling so bought? How'd that help them? How did that help them? Oh, did you see the way that their kids were just acting? How did that help them? That's gossip, that's sin, that's sin. Um, did you see that pastor in his shoes and that weird shirt? How can you get up on church and do that? Like, all I'm saying is, I'm saying is, these are like those acceptable sins. And Jesus claims he can set us free from all of it. From all of it. All of it. The big ones and the little ones. He can set us free. And it's, 
And this is the greatest part. The greatest part about it is it's not based upon your outward circumstances. But you know, a lot of times we try to say that, well, if, if my job was just easier, I wouldn't be so angry. If my wife would just do what I said. If the dog would just stop. If, if, if. We love blaming our problems, our sin, our struggle on everything else when Jesus says it's actually an inside work. It's an inside work. Can I talk to somebody today? You're talking to somebody who I've been in a lot of fist fights in my life. I actually enjoy fist fighting. It's <laughs> I should have been a boxer, but I have a soft nose. My nose breaks like that. So anyway, I had anger issues, man. Growing up, anger was a problem for me. So I'm talking to somebody who has read a lot of books and has put a lot of effort into this. Nobody can push your buttons. There's no such thing as blaming somebody for pushing your buttons. Well, they just know. If they push my buttons, what? What? What's going to happen? Well, I'm just going to lose self-control and be an immature child. Absolutely. That's what you are. Nobody can push your buttons. When you get enraged and you start fighting and arguing with somebody, that's your, that is not their problem whatsoever. That's your problem. You have lost control of yourself. They didn't provoke you. And how codependent have we all become? You know, let's just make sure that we don't push daddy's buttons. But daddy needs a spanking. <laughs> daddy needs his mom to come into the house and give you bow, bow. <laughs> I've read a lot of books. I read this one book. Reading out this guy, he was in prison. He was being tortured, tortured in prison. And the moment the torturing was over, he said he could easily sit down and eat dinner with the guards that were torturing him. Because although they may abuse his body, they could not break his spirit. He was in control of how he would respond and show love to those around him. And dude, we can't even control ourselves because someone said a bad word to us. We can't even control ourselves because someone cut us off on the highway. It's with Jesus saying, I have the power and I have set you free. Whom the Son has set free is free. You're free from anger. You're free from anxiety. You're free from depression. You're free. Walk there in it. Walk in the freedom. And how do we walk in the freedom? He says we walk in the freedom not because our external circumstances go away, we walk in the freedom because we hold on to his word. Amen. We hold on to the truth of his word. Spiritual freedom is not dependent upon physical circumstances, even those physical, even those circumstances that contributed to your bondage. We're going to talk about this um, in our series on grief, right? Something happens. Uh, most people who have a hoarding problem, a hoarder, you've seen that show? buried alive on TV. They went through a traumatic experience in their life. They lost something. They lost a person. They lost love. They lost a relationship. And now they want to keep everything. Right? That's a, that's a negative response to grieving. And a lot of us have gone through situations in our lives that we begin to respond to it incorrectly and want to numb our mind or numb our body by something else that causes a bondage. Causes a bondage. Somebody, somebody in here, man, you used to be the most outgoing, fun, cheerful person, and now you consider yourself a shy introvert. You were never a shy introvert, but you allowed whatever happened in your life to create that in you. But the sun has set you free. The sun has set you free. All right? Now, I want you to understand this. Jesus can set you free in your marriage without causing a divorce. Do I need to say that again? Jesus can set you free in your marriage, and he can bring happiness to you in your marriage without it having to end in divorce. Jesus can set you free when you've overdrawn on your checkbook without having to make a deposit in your account. 
Man, I try to tell people this about faith. Faith isn't the ability to access goods. Faith is the ability to access God. So, so I have people say, man, I just need to make more money. I need to make more money. Why do you need to make more money? Because I need a car. So that you don't need money. You need a car. Our focus is on the wrong thing. Now I need to make money. No, no, no. You need a car. It don't matter how the car comes. Someone could give you the car. Right? I need money. Why? Because I need to buy a bedroom set. So you don't need money. You need a bedroom set. And there's people who list stuff on Facebook Marketplace all the time for free. Come get it. Say, Lord, lead me. Lead me to the deals. Lead me. Right? All right. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Don't misunderstand this, all right? Don't misunderstand this. The circumstance doesn't have to change in order to find freedom. But there are some times that God is going to ask you to make some changes to find freedom. There's sometimes, some, sometimes, there's some things that we need to say, you know what? This is not healthy for me in my life. This relationship, this friendship, these people, this, it's not healthy for me in my life. And I need it to be removed, or I need to remove it, and I need to replace it with holding on to God's promises. Amen. Holding on to his truth. I want you to see this today. Freedom is not so that you can do whatever you want. Freedom is so that you can do what you ought. You get this, what ought means? What you should do. It's not freedom to do whatever you want, but it's a freedom so that I can do whatever I need to do. So let me explain this. I was gonna do this today, but I didn't. Um, many, many years ago, I was teaching my oldest daughter how to skateboard, right? So we got a skateboard, we got, we got all the pads, we got everything, and she's out there. And we had like this little like inclined hill in our backyard, and she's kind of like going up and down like it's a half pipe, and she's kind of learning how to skateboard. And then what happens? She doesn't have the pads on, she doesn't have the helmet on, she falls down. She fell down, cut her knee. Guess what happened to her skateboard career? That was it. Skateboard career over. I don't ever want to get on that skateboard again. I got my knee busted up. So I come out there. She ain't giving up. I spent too much money on that skateboard. <laughs> Put the knee pads on. Put the elbow pads on. Put the wrist guards on. Put the helmet on. Get back on the skateboard. Right? She get back on the skateboard. Do you know what happened the moment she put the pads on? She had confidence. She had confidence that it wasn't her intention to fall. It's her intention to do the trick. It's her intention to do what's right. But if I fall, I'm protected. If I fall, the knee pads, the elbow pads, the wrist pads, the helmet is gonna protect me from my fall. That's the grace of God. That's the grace of God. The grace of God is not so I can go do whatever I want. It's so that I have the freedom to try and do and live great and out loud. And if I mess up, I'm protected. That's the difference. That's the difference. Mm. As, we as we abide or as we hold on to Christ, we are released from the chains of the world and we are released to be all that God has created us to be. So let me give you this scenario real quick and bear with me. Follow along. We have this beautiful piano. Anybody have a piano? Beautiful piano. And have you ever seen a kid come up to the piano and start to play the piano? Kid, just kid. What do they do? Bang, 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 bang. The most annoying sound you ever want to hear in your life. It's absolutely annoying, right? Bang, 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 free! Play with bah, 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 free. But then you have a classically trained pianist. Come, sit down at the piano. I mean, they play so beautifully, it's like worship coming out of their hands. Let me ask you a question. 
It's kind of a trick question. Which one is more free? You'd think the kid, right? You'd think the kid. But the kid has no ability to use the piano for what it was created for. Only the person who was classically trained, professionally trained, has the ability to use the piano for what the piano was created for. Only they have the ability and the freedom to pull out of those keys chords and, and lines and runs that create this beautiful symphony of music. A kid can never do that. Are they free? Yes. Are they having fun? Yes. But they cannot use that piano to the magnitude that it could, so they're not as free. Those who are free in Christ are those who know the word and can apply the word to their everyday life. Whom the Son has set free, if you hold my word and know my truth, you're free. But you know what happens? We get partial truths. We get partial knowledge. And you know what happens to that? That becomes a weapon. That becomes a weapon. Partial truth and partial knowledge. Because do you know what happens with partial truth? It means it's a partial lie and you call yourself a Christian? And you call yourself a, oh my God, like seriously, fist fight. Fist fight right there, fist fight straight up. And you, and you call yourself a pastor? Not yours. <laughs> it's so, so manipulative, so ugly. You don't know what you're playing with. You don't know what you're playing with. You don't know the beauty that could come out of Christianity when we play according to what God has designed. And we're not talking about playing by the rules because I love Blake breaking like musical rules. I love breaking art rules. I love breaking fashion rules. I'm not talking about breaking rules or, or breaking God's rules or his, his standards. But he has a way. He says, if you do things my way, then you get to enjoy my blessing. Yes, if you do things my way, you get to enjoy my blessing. I'm gonna, I'm gonna break this down as we close here today. Get this. Jesus identifies a process, a process for experiencing true freedom. Do you wanna experience true freedom in your life? I know I do. I'm tired of being limited to my own bonehead mistakes. You're looking at the king of self-sabotage. Come on, somebody freedom. And he writes in this passage in, in John 8, he says, watch this, if, we underlined it, hold on a second, if you hold to my teachings, you are really my disciples, then you will know the truth. Now, in the Old Testament, now this is this is in the New Testament, but this is still under the Old Covenant. This is not one of the Old Covenant, if you do something, then God will do something. This is a little bit different. In the Old Testament, it was like, if my people who were called by my name would humble themselves and pray, seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then God would answer them. This one's not one of those. This did not say, if you read your Bible for an hour, if you pray for 35 minutes, if you intercede, then God will finally love you. What he is saying here in this one is this. Hold to Christ's teachings and freedom will be in your life. All right, let me explain it. Let me, let me break it down. You say to me, Pastor Mike, I want to see the sunrise in the morning. I will tell you, per Every single one of us has the opportunity to see the sunrise. 99.99999% of us, we don't even know we could. We still sleeping, right? So I say, you want to see the sunrise? You can see the sunrise every morning if you wake up early. If you wake up early, 
and you go outside and you look to the east, you get to see the sunrise. If you do this, then you get to see the sunrise. It is a fact. It is what's going on. This isn't even poetry. We don't have to be poetic to understand this. If you go outside early before the sun rises and look at the east, you're going to see it. Everybody has the opportunity. If you sleep in until 10 o'clock and go outside and look west, you don't get to see the sunrise. This is all Jesus is saying. If you hold to my teaching, you want freedom in your life, you got to hold to my teaching. Yes. You want freedom in your life, you got to know my teaching. Yes. You want freedom in your life, then you have to abide on the word. The word of God has to be part of your life. Listen, let's just be factual. If all you ever consume is K104, Hot 97, <laughs> hey, Baba, <laughs> Netflix, CNN, Fox News, you're probably going to be an ugly, angry person. You're not going to experience the freedom of your salvation. Jesus says, you want freedom. You want to know the truth because the truth will set you free. You get the truth by holding on to my word. Allowing the word into your life and transforming you. Check this out. Ask yourself this rhetorical question. Don't shout it out. Are you free today? Are you spiritually free today? Do you feel the freedom that Christ has offered you? Galatians 5.1 tells us this. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then. And do not let yourselves be burdened again by the yoke of slavery. Jesus did the work of providing freedom. Christ has set us free. What I need you to do, stand firm. And you're in control. Do not let, do not let, do not let yourself be burdened again. Don't go back to it. Don't go back to it. Don't let somebody put you back in it. Don't let somebody treat you in a way that you've been free from. Don't let somebody bring your past back up and remind you of your past. Don't let somebody do that. Don't live in the anxiety of someone bringing up your past. That's under the blood of Jesus. It's washed. It's gone. That's the old you. You're a new you. And then Paul goes on and he kind of like, he, he kind of like puts on the dad in Galatians 5.13. He says, you, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free. So don't use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly in love. Y'all, I wonder, can I just throw something out? There's a little bit of shade with a lot of sunlight. Could you imagine if churches in the same neighborhood could actually love each other? Could you imagine that we actually lived the Bible? See, it's so easy. It's so easy for pastors to get up and preach facts. Scripture says, Scripture says, Scripture says. But do you love your other neighborhood pastors? Do you love the person who lives next door to you whose dog keeps using your front yard as a toilet? I mean, look what this is saying. Do you love the person that angers you? Don't, 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 don't use this freedom to say, hey, I'm going to heaven so I can do whatever I want. No, he's saying, use your freedom to serve people. Use your freedom because you're light, because you're happy to bring healing and hope to those who are around you. This is what he's saying. Use your freedom to be an example to those because you're happy. You're energetic. Listen, I know. I know it can be a little strange coming to church and like we start playing songs and and like the lights start going, and you're hearing me sing like Axl Rose from ah! on, on the microphone. But like, I know that my salvation means something. 
I know I've been saved from something. I know it. Like, I know what Jesus has done in my life. I know that I was a sick, sick young guy. I almost died multiple times. That I know there's a purpose. Come on, somebody. And it is for freedom. There's a reason he set us free. It is for freedom. It's so that we bring others into freedom and that we enjoy this life that he has provided for us. I want to pray for you today. Father, I pray that everyone in the sound of my voice would find true freedom in your word. Not a freedom to be whatever and whoever they want to be, but a freedom to be who you created them to be. I pull out potential that's within people today. Potential that all they need is a chance. They just need someone to say, I see that in you. I see the greatness that is in you. I speak to that bondage in those things that are holding people back from living in true freedom. You have no authority in their life. Lord, I pray that you give us the confidence and the discipline to say no to those things that so easily hold us back. I pray that we would have a desire for your word, a desire for your truth, a desire to feed on your word and to be nourished by you. Lord, as we leave here today, I thank you that we are blessed. We were blessed coming in. We'll be blessed going out. Everything we set our hands to will prosper and be successful in Jesus' name. Amen. I love you. See you next week. Thank you for watching today's message. My name is Ashley, and if this message has made an impact in your life in any way, I'd like to ask you to do a couple of things. First, we want you to like and subscribe to our channel and join us right here every Sunday at 9.30 a.m. or 11.30 a.m. The next thing I'm gonna ask you to do is take a next step on your journey, and we would love to help you do that. You can head on over to FamilyChurchNY.com or email us at team at FamilyChurchNY.com to get started today.